up, Tasha here with Butterfield Alpaca Ranch. Welcome to Packa Tuesday. This is the second in a series of videos all about how to process alpaca fiber and specifically how to take it from the raw fiber right off the animal to yarn. Last week we discussed skirting and sorting. Today we're doing tumbling and washing. Alpacas love to roll in the dirt. It's actually part of their hygiene. And here's what it looks like. So you can imagine how much dirt is in their fiber. Now alpaca fiber does not have any lanolin, so we don't have to wash that off. Pretty much the reason you're washing is to get the dirt off. To help your washing not take so long because of so much dirt, we tumble first. And this can be done with pretty much anything. There's a lot of homemade versions out there. They can look quite different, but the whole point of them is to tumble the fiber in such a way that allows the loose dirt to just fall out. My version is uh, a dryer. This is a, a dryer in which the heating element has gone out and it's fine for this purpose. I wouldn't use heat anyway. Uh, everything else on it works really well. It actually tumbles. So this is the inside of my dryer and you can see nothing has changed except for all of these nails. I got the instructions to do this from a blog post and I will link that in the description box below so you can find those instructions. But I have these really long nails and epoxied or really glued these heavy duty magnets on the end and you have to special order these magnets they don't cost much the nails don't cost much so this is a really simple project to do like I said you just epoxy these together and put them wherever you want inside the dryer so I've chosen to do these rows and what they do is as the fiber is tumbling inside they actually break apart clumps allowing the dirt to fall so for demonstration purposes today, I have chosen a white fleece, that way you can see more noticeably the difference in before and after. And you can already tell that this white is pretty dirty. Um, some are, spots are really nice and white and some are kind of dingy. And there's noticeable bits of dirt and VM, which is vegetation matter. Some people say vegetable matter, I think I said that in the last video. Um, but basically all the bits of nature that find themselves into this fleece. So I would just toss this in here and how much is going to depend on your tumbler, how much it holds. You still want space for that fiber to actually be able to tumble around. And you can tell how this is all kind of sticking together. This is a wakaya fleece and the nails are in there to help break this apart and then the dirt fall. So here is the tumbled fiber, and as you can see, there's a lot of dirt already. And so I'll put this in a separate bin. And um, do be aware of where you have those nails. Um, I find I don't necessarily have to use gloves to reach in, um, since I have them in those rows. Um, it's pretty easy to find out where they're at. Fiber actually already looks brighter to me. <laughs> Don't know if you could see that. The next step is to actually clean the tumbler out. Now, your whatever system that you come up with, you're going to have to find a way to do this. Um, some people do this outside, so it's just something that they can sweep up or and all that. Um, so I have this little handheld vacuum. You could also use the um, attachments on your upright or something like that. Uh, but I go ahead and I clean up all the dirt in here. Now we're ready to wash. And what I recommend is that you use large lingerie bags. And I don't quite know the size of this one, but it's the largest one I could find. Um, I will put a link to Amazon down below because I know that's where I got it from. Um, you can get a set of those yourself. And so we're just going to stuff this lingerie bag 
leaving enough room in which um, like you don't want to overfill it. You want the dirt to be able to escape. You want the fiber to be able to move. How many of these you do is going to depend on um, the space you have to wash and dry. I use my skirting tables to dry. And so pretty much the how many bags I use is how many I can get on those skirting tables. Since I have two tables, I can do about five of these bags at once. Um, I'm not quite sure how much they weigh. Uh, when I have fiber in them, I just kind of fill them until it looks good. And then I'll close it up. For today's demonstration, I'm just going to do two of them. That looks good. Washing alpaca is pretty simple compared to other fibers. There's no lanolin, so we don't have to use any abrasive soaps. Um, Again, we're just getting the dirt out. So the way that I wash alpaca is a four-step process. Each lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. When you're washing alpaca, you want to be careful not to felt it. So no drastic temperature changes and no agitation. You want to fill the sink first and then put the bags of fiber in rather than running water on top of the fiber. Um, because that creates agitation, which leads to the, the greater potential to felt. And at this point, we're not wanting to felt. The first step is hot water, the hottest that my tank can give me. And I'm just going to dunk it in there and soak it. There is no soap at this time. It's just plain water. And it's hot water um, that will encourage those fibers to open up. Um, the alpaca fiber itself has uh, little scales on it. Now if those scales open and close, that creates the felting effect because all those fibers get connected together. So that's why when we're opening these fibers, we don't want to encourage them to close by using cold water or a drastic temperature change and the agitation of rubbing all those scales together. We want to avoid all of that. So this hot water is encouraging the fibers to open and we're just going to gently dunk them in there and let them soak. So the next step is going to be using soap. Those fibers are already all open, those scales are open and ready to release the dirt. I just want to gently soak it in here. all the air out so it sinks. All right, so I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes. Now I'm ready for step two, and that's the actual wash step. So you want to use a really mild detergent. Uh, you don't want it to be a shampoo like for your hair. You never want to use conditioner on alpaca fiber. We just want to use a gentle soap. Um, so my soap of choice is Original Blue Dawn. And a lot of fiber people prefer this. It's really gentle. And you don't need much of it. I mean a couple teaspoons. Um, you can kind of play around with it. We're not interested in suds. So we don't want a lot of suds. It's going to take many steps to rinse all that out. We just want enough to release the dirt and actually wash the fiber. So I'm just going to do a little bit in there. And I'll mix it up, but I'm not creating suds. So I'm not doing that much. In transferring from one sink to the next or one step to the next, you want to be very gentle. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll up each of these bags and squeeze out excess water. You can see me doing that. I'm just rolling it up.
Just gently squeeze it. Again, no agitation. The water's coming out not too bad for the first round here. What works out nicely about this is the bag that was on top in this step is on the bottom in this step. So if there is any concern about not getting the benefit of being completely submerged, it will be in this step. So I just rolled all that out. Hopefully you saw that well. As, okay, I doubt the camera's getting this, but as I'm putting pushing this down, I see dirt pluming up in the water. So, it's working. Okay. Now ready for step three, which is going to be the rinse step. So this is just plain hot water. Every step I'm doing is the same temperature water. I don't know if I mentioned that before, um, but the hottest that I can get is the temperature that I'm using each time. So going from the wash to the rinse step, uh, I'm going to do just as I did before, where I'm going to roll up the bags. And squeeze so don't wring it. Just squeeze the water out. Mm. Yep, rinse some more dirt, more dirt. <laughs> Now I can already notice that the fiber is whiter. You can definitely tell it's cleaner. Now right in here I still see that there's some more bits caught up in there, um, but that will be taken care of in our next couple of steps. I mean, in the next video with those steps. And this one, can you see? That? Yeah, you can see that dirt. This can be the rinse. Now we do have one final step, which is like this. Um, but you can do as many of these steps as you need to to get the water to run fairly clean. Now next week we're going to talk about picking and carting and that is going to release more dirt as well. So before you actually get to spinning, which would be that final step, um, all of these steps have the ability to remove dirt. Now, depending on the dirtiness of the fleece, for me, four steps um, is adequate. Um, my animals, yeah, they're dirty, but they're not excessively dirty. And the land that they're on, the pasture and their dry lot area, um, it's well enough where there's not a lot of VM. There's not an excess of stuff that makes them extra dirty. So four times for me is just fine. But let's get a close-up of this water before I drain it. There it is. So this is my wash cycle. Compare that to the first step that we did and how clear in comparison that water was. Like I can hardly even see the bottom of the sink. Look at all that dirt. We are now ready for step four and for me this is going to be the final step but I have again hot water. Right now it's just clear hot water, but I'm going to add a dash of white vinegar. This is going to strip away any remaining soap that you have. I don't expect too much on here because I did not use very much soap, but um, if you feel like you did or you have a lot of suds, you just feel like you need a little help with the soap, do a dash of vinegar in your final rinse.
you want to be careful with this because you don't want your fiber to smell like vinegar. If you use too much, you're going to need to spend time getting that vinegar smell out. So just be careful about that. I just finished the final step and rinsed them out like I did, or wrung them out like I did all the other steps. But now I'm going to get the extra water out with some towels. Take my time and squeeze. Get you moist, as much moisture out as I can, because that's going to cut down on your drying time. So you may be wondering why I choose to wash the fiber by hand rather than a washing machine, because some people do it that way. Uh, but my experience uh, with, well, it has been with washing dryer balls in my washing machine that there's fiber that's left in the machine and then when I do my personal laundry I get fiber all over everything so instead of having to run more and more cycles of the wash to clean it out or not clean it out well at all I just choose to do all this by hand and when I'm in here I'm doing other steps like the picking and the carding in between the tumbling and the washing so you know, it's easy for me to take a break and, you know, every 20 minutes during all these steps. So I just say I prefer to do it this way. And because of these sinks, I can do five bags, these large bags. So I can get quite a bit washed at one time. Okay, and if you need to switch towels, you can, and I will. And I can see, can you see? yeah, it's a bit dirty. So like I said, every step, you're getting more and more out, more of that dirt out. So you may have noticed that I have out my skirting table, and this is great for drying because it allows the air to circulate really well around the fiber. And I can get about three of these bags drying out on this table. I have a smaller skirting table as well, um, which would hold the other two bags. So five, like I said before, five bags is my key number. So all we're doing here is we're going to take this out. Now look at how much cleaner this is than when we were doing the tumbling. And it's going to kind of feel like human hair when it's wet. So you'll just kind of get used to that. Um, I'm just going to lay it out here. And I kind of open up the clumps just for, you know, airflow. And it typically takes about 24 hours in this environment for it to dry. So don't uh, crowd it. Give it lots of space for airflow. When I've been in a hurry, um, I've put a fan, of, like a box fan, underneath on low just to get the air circulating. So if you need to speed up this process, you certainly can. Uh, don't put this in the dryer to dry. That heat is a big no-no. The heat and the tumbling Oh, you're going to have a big felted mess. Don't do that. Lay it out in a way in which it can air dry. Now that we've tumbled and washed our alpaca fiber, next week we are going to pick and card it. So be on the lookout for that video next Tuesday. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it out with your friends, and remember to subscribe to the channel. If you have ideas for other video topics you'd like me to do, whether it be alpacas or fiber related, make sure to leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. If you want to know what videos are coming up, what's going on at my alpaca ranch, and what alpaca products I have available, you want to subscribe to my newsletter. That link is going to be down in the description box below, along with links to anything that I refer to in this video. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the next video.